This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, April the 29th, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Catherine of Siena, arguably the most important laywoman of the Middle Ages. She was a child of the plague era and was the 25th, yes, 25th child born to her mother. Half of her siblings, including her twin, did not live to adulthood. And like many other female saints, Catherine's parents pushed her to marry, but she felt a strong vocation otherwise and took up penance as a way of personal fortification against her parents' strong suggestions. She became a third-order Dominican, so not a sister, formally speaking. At the age of 21, Catherine had a supernatural experience that she described as a, quote, mystical marriage to Jesus. In that experience, she was instructed to enter public life and to serve the poor, which she did. This caused quite a ruckus in Siena and the neighboring towns, and she found herself drawn into politics, of all things, and she became a loud, vocal advocate for reform in the church, and in particular in the papacy. She called the Pope out a number of times and took to writing letters to him directly. But let's be clear, she never called into question the office of the papacy. She never acted with disrespect. She was instrumental, though, in convincing the pope to move the papal court from Avignon back to Rome. She was instrumental in establishing and staffing a crusade to the Holy Land. And she did all of this before her 30th birthday. In 1379, she became very ill. And despite calls from her confessor, Blessed Raymond of Capua, to set aside her penances, she died today in 1380. She's venerated as the patroness of the United States, of Italy, of those who have suffered miscarriages, of people ridiculed for their faith, of sexual temptation, and of nurses. Today in 1862, during the American Civil War, Union forces under David Farragut captured the city of New Orleans. Farragut was a flag officer, and he coined the slightly misrecorded phrase, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. The capture of New Orleans was a big deal at the moment because it was the largest city in the Confederacy. It was also the most important city, probably in the entirety of North America, for its port, and it was a gigantic strategic victory which gave the Union control of the entire Mississippi River. Farragut chose not to destroy or loot the city, as had been the fate of so many other southern cities, but the real importance of the event would be the installation of Major General Benjamin Butler. After Farragut turned the city over to him, Butler quickly began to run New Orleans as his own personal fiefdom. He was notorious for corruption and for picking fights and then punishing the people with whom he had picked the fights. The so-called spoils system, in which the newly elected government is freely encouraged to hand out lucrative jobs and appointments to political benefactors, including family and friends, was not of Butler's invention, but he had a major part to play in ensconcing that policy in law. Much of the violence and the resentment of the Reconstruction era in Louisiana would come back to Butler's policies, and the spoil system was a direct cause of the Colfax Massacre in 1873. The notorious and unapologetic corruption of northern politicians would ultimately be responsible for the long-standing racial divide in the South and for the creation of white supremacist organizations like the KKK. There's a shocking correlation between the personality and vigor of Reconstruction-era appointees and racial animosity. The more the locals were left to govern themselves, the less racial divide there was and there is today. Conversely, the more strongly imposed was the northern political agenda in the 1870s, the more racial divide endures. While Butler is celebrated by historians, his ego and leadership arguably destroyed the lives of whites and blacks for a century. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.